The Chartered Institute of Bankers of Nigeria, CIBN, has once again taken the lead to chart a better course at these economically challenging times when Nigeria yearns for all the capacity contribution from credible organizations. On behalf of the Governing Council of the Chartered Institute of Bankers of Nigeria, the Consultative Committee of the CIBN 17th and our banking and finance conference and the entire banking industry, I want to express my sincere appreciation and gratitude, you know, to you for honoring the invitation, you know, to this media uh, panel, which is very, very important, you know, to our forthcoming program. Economic growth and development is the central focus of the Institute 2024 edition of the annual banking and finance conference. This is in consistence with the institute tradition of being at the forefront in quest for economic stability and national development. This year's CIBN Banking and Finance Conference, scheduled to hold from 10th to 11th of September 2024 at the Hilton Hotel Abuja, is themed Accelerated Economic Growth and Development, the State of Play and the way forward. In a world media briefing held Thursday at the Bankers House, the Chairman Consultative Committee for the conference, Dr. Oliver Alauba, Group Managing Director at UBA, said that the discussion at the conference will focus on the African and indeed Nigerian economic landscape, examining key growth drivers and coming up with strategies for sustainable growth and development. This event the largest gathering of banking and finance professionals in Africa. We convened over 10,000 participants, including professionals, policymakers, regulators, and other key stakeholders. The discussion will focus on Nigeria and indeed Africa's economic landscape, examining key growth drivers, and come up with strategies for sustainable growth and development. We are honored to have distinguished guests, including President Bola Ahmed Tinimbu and other key leaders from across Africa in attendance. Good messages will be delivered by eminent economic personalities, such as the Central Bank Governor, Olayemi Kadoso, along with other eminent scholars across Africa. According to Dr. Alauba, some of the key topics to occupy discussions are the strong business sessions during the conference are how to unlock possibilities through artificial intelligence, how to diversify Nigerian economic export base and addressing issues of ethics. These issues will be dissected by experts not only in the business, but also in policy making. We are going to have three strong business sessions. I will be dealing with unlocking possibilities through artificial intelligence and innovation. We are going to be dealing with diversifying our uh, export base. Of course, you know FX is a major issue, and you can't talk about FX without export. So we are going to bring in experts not just experts in the industry, but even policymakers around the export policy that will come in to have it, share that discussion. We are going to also be discussing issues of what, how will banking actually contribute to economic development. Call it recapitalization exercise being done. Call it even um, artificial intelligence. Call it even financial inclusion, technology, digital economy. All those will also be coming to plan. We have lined up of very experienced and uh, erudite uh, scholars and uh, practitioners who will be there to discuss fully in detail and provide solutions on how this country and indeed Africa can move forward. So it's a very robust um, and very practical uh, um, conference. In addition, we're going to have a dinner. That dinner will be interaction for the youth. Of course, you, you had the president talk about cap capacity, and we know that we've been uh, plagued by the issue of Jabba syndrome. So we'd like to move from Jabba to Jabada. 
and that dinner will be a center stage for that interaction. Yeah. I'm going to showcase Nigerians, Nigerian youths that have done very well. You may not know that today we have one of the youngest uh, senators, Senator uh, Asuko. Yeah, yeah, He's going to be there that, uh, for that to anchor that, uh, that dinner. We're also going to have the youngest professor, a uh, uh, vice chancellor in Nigeria. That's Professor Aisha Mekudi, the yeah. vice chancellor of University of Abuja. Yeah. She will also be there. She has confirmed her presence. We're also going to have the youngest uh, commissioner of finance in the country today. Mr. Michael Odero. So they will be there to provide insights, to provide opportunities that it is still the smart choice to be in Nigeria. And Nigeria is still anywhere you are. This is the country that has the, that is blessed the most in the whole world. So yes, people want to have reason to go out to move out the country, but there are more reasons to come into the country than to live. So that will be uh, how that, so I think that ties even Shima's um, Yes. Question about the capitalization. Yes, we're going to have a session yeah. for that during yeah. the business session. Thank you very much. Thank you. Dr. Alauba specifically emphasized the focus of the dinner that will be held to close the conference. This, he said, we hold iteration about the youths aimed at turning the current Jaqua syndrome to Jaquada. We want to showcase Nigerian youths that have done very well. Senator Asuko Ekweyong, the youngest senator, and Professor Aisha Mekudi, the youngest vice chancellor at the University of Abuja, will be in attendance to lead iteration at the dinner. In his welcome address, President and Chairman of Council of CIBN, Professor Pius Deji Olariwaju articulated the agenda of his administration with the acronym LEGACY. Professor Olariwaju hopes to lead an innovative financial system while building ethics and professionalism. The agenda of my administration, what I call the LEGACY team, is encapsulated in the acronym LEGACY. That is where the legacy agendas and the legendary team emanated from. The acronym, you know, has the following meaning. Our L, you know, focuses on the need for us to lead an innovative financial system. We believe that as the pay setter, as the progenitor of the program, there is need for us to demonstrate, you know, that we are also digitally ready for the next you know, to the next level. And because of this, you realize that we are already engaged, you know, in uh, trying to digitalize our system and our programs. And before the year runs out, the coming to this house will be like you can link, the moment you are in this house, you can link with anywhere in the world. And uh, we believe that this is very important for the kind of business we are into. E is entrenching ethics and professionalism and integrity. We have been doing this that we want to sustain it, and not only sustaining it, we want to make sure that we raise the bar, and also through advocacy, through training, through certification, to ensure that our members are people of integrity, and people who have the competence and the skill set that is needed for them to excel in their colleagues. Our G is issue related to gender, generational, and geographical diversity. We have taken into consideration that the Nigerian we have as a country it has a lot of diversity. Diversity in terms of gender, diversity in terms of generational, and diversity in, in terms of ge geography, ge uh, geographical uh, 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 pla uh, places. And because of this, we have decided that as an institute, we should try as much as possible to make sure that this is reflected in what we are doing. And I want to thank the banking industry you know, if you observe in recent time, you will realize that not less than 10 of the chief executives of banks today are women. In fact, it's, it is instructive for us to note that the last two, that uh, Senate and also GT, are women. You know, our women are really coming behind. We want to be, we want to promote inclusivity. You know, it's not just a men's world, but it's also, you know, also women's world. Our A is a uh, Accelerating 
you know, the Institute's vision and values. We have value that we are noted for, you know, which were given to us by our forefathers. Value of accountability, value of transparency, value of uh, responsibility. We want to engender this and accelerate it and make it known widely by our members so that uh, you know, we can cut a very good image and con continue to promote the brand equity of a great institute. Our C is competence in the banking industry and finance with the need to aid economic development. If you look at the theme of this forthcoming conference, our focus is on economic development, you know, because we know that we cannot build a nation, you know, that is varied, that we all of us will be proud of if the economic activities is not properly done. And we are now saying in the banking industry, we don't longer want to be, you know, an observer. We want to be a partaker. We want to have experiential participation in what is going on in governance. And one of the ways we can do this is by taking a step of it. When we are able to build competence among our members, some of these members also will use their competence in those key areas of the economy. And we are reaching out to those people in, gov in government to do this. And I'm glad to intimate to you that we had already started discussion with some of the ministries and the response has been very, very positive, especially you know, the national budget uh, and economic planning. We are, we, are, we are working with them now and we want to be involved in how things have been done so that we can correct at the uh, fancy stage any misdeeds or anything that is not uh, correct. And lastly, that's our hope of tomorrow. Why they are representing youth and entrepreneurial engagement? We believe that any institution, anybody that wants to see tomorrow must always believe in a, a Franklin Roosevelt uh, 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 statement mm -hmm. that if we cannot you know, build the future, you know, for the youth. At least we can prepare the youth for the future. So we want to, as an institute, we are determined to make sure that those who come behind will be able to achieve greater heights than what we are doing. And that is why the last why is focusing on our youth and our programs as, as the year comes to an end, I mean, the coming comes to an end, you will realize that in October we'll be inviting you for a Gen Z program. We, last year we recorded over 88,000 participants. And this year we want to double that by God's grace, through the support of the press and all our institutions. When we realize that at times that these funds are not there, you can only give what you, what you have, you cannot give what you don't have. That's why you realize that we are now talking of issue of recapitalization. That if the banks get more funds, more money, then they'll be able to finance transactions that will bring about development. So if you look at our infrastructure, we have infrastructure decay in the country today. Roads are not built, roads need to be built, schools need to be built, a lot of things need to be done socially to enhance the value system of people. And, and there is problem of insecurity, and you need money to fund all those things. That is why we believe we are in support of the recapitalization, that if these funds are readily available to the banks, you understand, they'll be able to do these projects. And some of these projects, they create jobs. If construction is going on, a lot of people will be working there. These schools are well run, the things will move on uh, 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 in a very good order. So what we are trying to do is to see, give us opportunity to have more funds, then we develop the economy, we play our own role. But when it concerns the issue of regulation, it is the government, the legislation that has that power. But we know that as far as we are concerned, within our space, we want to provide the fund that is needed for development. And that we have been doing in the past, and we continue to do. And I have a hope that with the strategy being put in place, this recapitalization will work. And if it works, the better for the economy, the better for the nation. Our capital base, what we have said is that we have looked at the issue, we carried out a research on the issue of people Japalizing, leaving the country to the others. We can't arrest. It's very difficult for you to come to the policy to tell somebody not to go and school abroad. They will go to school and they will not come back. There's nothing you can do. We now look at how can this be resolved. What we have done on our own is that we are now saying that instead of people going away, let us try as much as possible to have a place where when the talents are going, then we create more talents. So one of, some of them will go away. And even when they go away, remember that we, in Africa, we have cultural affili uh, affiliation with our people. When they go there, they send funds home. You know, like I said the other time, 
you find out that a lot of money are coming from the diaspora into the system. It will help the system. Then if those people should leave, then we have a replacement. And that is what Uma Capital School is focusing and is about to do. And we are going to implement it. We are intentional about it. And we we'll bring it to reality. And God's grace. He assured stakeholders, banking professionals, and indeed every Nigerian a very robust conference. This is Robert Ipoga reporting for same television.